Greetings to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another Sunday morning as we come and seek to share another word from the Lord with each and every one of you. <clears throat> Today is a very special day as we give honor to all of our mothers and godly women out there as they continue to perform their tasks and duties in sowing into the lives of children. On today, we want to honor them and celebrate them for that they were, have been the second best gift that God has ever given to humanity. The first gift is his beloved son, Jesus Christ. But then the second gift is the love of our mothers. So we celebrate them on today. And as we come to celebrate them today, we shall not and cannot look beyond the hurt and pain that many mothers are experiencing on this day. We have seen so much on the news and heard so much even in our own communities from the loss of the lives of children. And our prayers at Abyssinia continue to be for you and with you, that the God of all comfort will bring peace to your heart and healing in this season. So we honor you on this day and we do not forget you and what you are going through. On today, we're going to ask that you would turn with us in your Bibles to the Gospel as recorded by Matthew, the 20th chapter. And we're going to read in your hearing verses 20 through 23. That is Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 20 through 23. <clears throat> And on today, I am once again reading from the New International Version of Scripture, but I cordially invite you to read along with the translation that you have before you. There we would find these words. Then the mother of Zebedee, the, then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? And she said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, we are able. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, most holy and heavenly, we stand once again before you. We sit in our tent doors. Our ears are eager to hear. Our hearts are ready to receive what your spirit would share with us on today. As we come together to honor those great gifts that you have given us, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would speak to us in such a way that we would acknowledge it was you who has led us and who is keeping us and who continues to lead us along this path of life. And realizing, oh God, that you have sent all that we need to
to do all that you've intended for us to do. So we bless your name and invite your spirit in right now. This we do ask and pray in the mighty and blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we do say, Amen. Today I want to speak to you from the thought a motherly desire. A motherly desire. Mother's Day is a day that calls to remembrance all of the sacrifices, the heartfelt words, the moments of compassion, the scenes of care and concern displayed down through the years that are now engraved in our memory by that person that many of us call mother, mama, mom, or mom. And I believe there is next to nothing to compare that will measure up to a mother's love for her children. Not only does she display these acts upon her children and the children around her, she also has expectations for them. For a godly woman always desires the best for her child. Sometimes it is even in spite of what the child may initially think or do. But a mother sees the possibilities and seeks to inspire a child towards his or her potential. A possibility that many times far exceed her own accomplishments. And this is because she herself acknowledges the God of possibilities and has carried her children and other children before him in prayer. Then as that child achieves or advances towards his or her potential, a mother feels a sense of personal satisfaction and accomplishment, knowing that what she has sown is budding hope in the life of another. And that is why you see them exhibit so much pride in every little accomplishment, every good grade in school, graduation, weddings, and career choices, and so on and so forth. All of the highlight moments of one's life are an extension of a godly mother's desire. And I feel I also must mention, when a child goes awry, for whatever reason it may be, a mother's pain is very deep as she feels a sense of personal failure. And many times she suffers with it in silence, shedding midnight tears. And this is the experience for not only the women you call mothers, but for every godly woman who has entered your life's circle, be it a church mom, a a neighbor, or even a friend of the family. They always want the best possible situation for a child. And that is that motherly desire instilled in each one of them as they invest what they have to give in the growth of a child. 
And such is the example provided in our text today. This wife of Zebedee, a godly woman, the mother of the disciples Jesus named the sons of thunder, James and John. Very little is known about her. Her name is not mentioned in scripture. And apart from these verses that have been read in your hearing, she is mentioned only one other time. And that is at the death of Jesus Christ. But on today, I'll call her Mama X. Mama X was with Mary and Mary Magdalene as Christ died on the cross. Some scholars say that Mama X is Salome, who Mark names in the 15th chapter and the 40th verse of his gospel, and also the 16th chapter and the first verse, citing that she was with Mary and Mary Magdalene. But even though we don't know her name, it really does not diminish the things that we can learn about a godly mother's desire. As we see her in our scripture today, the first thing that we'll notice about her is her position. For we learn a little about Mama X in the scripture. We learn more about her through the characters of our son. And I want to stop right here and just insert to someone today that most of the people that you encounter in this life will never meet or know much about your mother, but they can learn more about her <clears throat> through you. Right off the bat, we can deduce that this woman was a godly woman. For the 20th verse says, she came kneeling down before Jesus. Kneeling was and is a posture of humility as well as a posture of prayer. So note that she was an humble woman and she was a praying woman. And she instantly knew the position to take for the desires of her heart. Which lets us know that this was not her first time of entering into the presence of the Lord. But even if it was, she is teaching us today that when you desire something from the Lord, you must humble yourself and pray. For the correct posture will gain a private audience with the Lord. And know that God sees not only the position of our circumstances, but also the position of our presentation. Mama X came kneeling, but yet she was not kneeling and humbling herself for herself. She was not assuming the prayer position with a petition that would directly benefit her. At this moment in her life, she was not thinking about herself but she was thinking about someone else. It does not matter whether her petition was for her own children or for someone else's. A motherly desire casts a broad net to cover the multitude of those she knows personally and those she merely knows of. We cannot count how many times a godly woman 
has been in a praying position, lifting a desire for someone else. Some of whose name she could not call when she could have been focusing on herself. Brothers and sisters, you must know that there are people who are humbling themselves before Almighty God on your behalf. Sister Dorothy Norwood was 1,000% correct when she sang the words, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took a little time to pray for me. And what a care they have displayed for you when they kneel down and pray. Especially in those times when you won't even kneel for yourself. You can believe that a godly mother will pray for her children. She knows that she can cast her cares on Jesus because he cares for her. And this godly mother put herself in the right position, humbly before the foot of Jesus, respecting and reverencing who he was. And after she positioned herself, she began to speak her petition. Jesus recognized her and asked her what she desired. And Mama X began to present her petition before the Lord. The text goes on to, to record her position. She said, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right and the other on your left in your kingdom. Wow. What a petition. What a request to seek to position your child on the left and on the right hand of Jesus. What a place of honor. And to make such a request was a bold statement. But yet, the word of God <coughs> tells us to come boldly before the throne of God. But let's consider what she's saying in her petition. She's saying, Lord, I know you've got 10 other disciples and a multitude of other people who are following you. And I know they, they love you. I know they respect you. And I know they, they reverence you. But none like my boys. And I don't know about anybody else, but that sounds like a proud mother to me. Because a proud mother will always sing her child's praises. And think she wasn't asking that they sit next to the priest. She wasn't asking that they take a seat beside the governor. She wasn't asking that they would even sit beside the patriarchs. But Mama X was seeking reserved seating beside the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What kind of mother would make such a request unless she believed that without a doubt, 
that her sons could live up to such honor bestowed. There are some theologians who contend with the fact that Mama X and her sons had sat down and talked about this before presenting it to Jesus. And then after their discussion, they were not deterred from making such a petition. Mama X believed that she and her husband Zebedee had raised her boys upright. And she saw in them their possibility and sought to move them closer to their potential. And what mother would seek to limit a child's potential or denounce his or her possibilities? Just because you start at the entry level doesn't mean that you're not capable of climbing up the ladder of success, climbing up to upper management and even ownership. But to do such a thing, it requires a bold faith, a faith that allows you to see beyond the present and move towards a greater future. The word of God encourages us to ask and it reminds us that we have not because we ask not. And Mama X didn't totally understand the full extent of what she was asking. But you have to give it to her because she was asking anyway. She presented her petition before the Lord. And the third thing that we will take notice of in this particular scripture was the poise of Mama X and her sons. Was she wrong in making such a petition? I think not. Remembering that a godly mother always wants the best for her child. She had talked about it with them and apparently they were in agreement with her. And therefore, Jesus does not address his answer to her. But instead, he turns to the sons and he addresses his reply to them, asking them, are you able to drink that cup that I'm about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? James and John were poised with self-confidence. And they spoke up and answered the master's reply. And they said unto him, we are able. And just to have that manner of confidence speaks to a level of preparation that they felt as though they had received. Somebody had to prepare them. Somebody had to put in the time to nurture, to encourage, to train, to admonish, and even to correct them. And as the proverb says, train up a child the way he should go. And even when you or I should fall short, a mother's desires would still continue to grow. For she never cast aside her children or her expectations. 
She would never let her hope die and her dreams be dashed. She would not bury a child's potential or possibility. But she would hold tightly to that handle of hope, even in the darkest of circumstances. Someone said, only believe that all things <coughs> are possible. And my brothers and sisters, this is why when other people are looking negatively at our children, when others are casting them aside and writing them off, a mother holds on to hope for she believes in her child's potential. But the question is, where did Mama X, where did your mother and my mother and all of the others get these qualities that they have so eagerly passed on and instilled in the lives of the children? Where did they learn how to be there at just the right time and say or do just the right thing? How did they learn how to be what you needed when you needed it? The answer, my friends, is as good as your mother is or may have been. There is a greater source for all of her wisdom and sensitivity. And it's still available to us today to be tapped into if we would. There is a greater source of all her compassion and concern. There is a greater source of all of her wisdom and encouragement. One who has the greatest desire for each and every one of us. The psalmist described him and said that he'll be a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. And he is the almighty God, our heavenly father. We will find that he has that nurturing spirit for all who would come under his wings. His love is greater than a mother's love. His care for you is even more than a mother's cares for you. He wants to see you excel. He wants to see you fill all of your possibilities and achieve all of your potential. And he knows how to give you what you need when you need it. He knows how to prepare you for all the things in this life that you're going to face. And he has spoken by the prophet Jeremiah saying, I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And my brothers and sisters, as honorably as a mother and or godly woman has desires for your future, so does your heavenly father. He has desires 
for you too. And he has and is letting it be known through the actions of a motherly desire. So today, we celebrate and give thanks to our mothers and all the godly women who have interceded in and influenced our lives and to God himself who sent them to be instruments in our growth, advancement towards our possibilities and potentials. Let us honor them and honor him. I want to say unto them all, Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms and the godly women who sow or have sown into our lives their desire for our success. To God be the glory for the gift of each one of them. Someone has said in times past, where would I be if had it not been for mother? Oh, brothers and sisters, she comes in just the right hour and she brings with her just the right medicine to encourage a child to run on and see what the end is going to be. <clears throat> they have sold so diligently into each and every one of us. Let us not only honor them on this day, but honor them each day by doing our very best to reach our potential and not stop until we've filled all of our possibilities. God has great plans for each and every one of us. And it is his desire and it is a motherly desire that we would reach and achieve what has been set before us. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today as the wife of Zebedee, the mother of James and John, presented themselves, presented herself before the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know that there are desires in our hearts there are desires in the hearts of those who continue to sow into our lives to aid us, to guide us, to lead us, and to help us to reach that potential that you have set before us. That we might honor the plan that you have given to govern our lives. <clears throat> we thank you today, God, for that nurturing spirit that you continue to share with each and every one of us as you operate through our mothers and through godly women as they seek to do that which is instinctive of them because you have given it unto them. For God, we realize is that it is you working through them to help us to be the best we can be. So we thank you for them and we thank you for your, for your contribution and what you do in our lives daily. And we come today, oh God, and we know that there are some today, some mothers who are hurting, some mothers whose lives are wrapped in darkness and pain because of the loss of their beloved child, 
but even in the temporary moment in which they were with us, you allowed them to receive the benefits of what their mother had to give. Give her that comfort, that sense of accomplishment to knowing that all things are not in her control. But there is a perfect will and nothing has occurred, nothing has been done that is outside of her will. And even though today we may not understand it, but yet by and by, when the morning comes, will understand it better. But we thank you today for those who have prayed for us and kept us on your, their mind. How they have positioned themselves before you, petitioned on our behalf, and remain poised, even though it may not have been fulfilled and granted as was desired. But yet, God, we know that you always desire what's best for us. So thank you for all things continue to be in your hands. And now, God, we pray your greatest blessings and favor upon the mothers and the godly women of our world. Increase their knowledge, their strength, their influence, and their encouragement, that they will not grow weary even in times such as these. Because, O oh Lord, you have taught us that we will reap if we think not. And I know there is a harvest that is being prepared or the reaping. Thank you for today. Bless them, bless their families, bless those around them. This we do ask and pray in the glorious and majestic name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We say thank you and amen. My brothers and sisters, those of you who still have the blessed privilege of having your mother still here in the land of the living with you. Even if you cannot physically get to her today, call her up and just tell her thank you for all the things that she has done in your life. Some of you may say, well, I wasn't raised by my mother, but I'm here to tell you there is somebody who sowed into you a motherly desire. Call her up and thank her for what she has done. And even if you're not in communication with your biological mother, then tell the Lord, thank you. Because one of the greatest blessings that she has given you is life and because of it you're still here so regardless of the situation give thanks honor them today for all that they have done because of who they are we are who we are god bless you and may heaven smile richly upon you and give you peace. I ask, as always, that you stay safe, stay tuned, and stay connected until we meet again. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And again, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers and the godly women. God bless you.